My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. The fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. The Lord in his role as that kindly caretaker, outreach, searching us out. So, so many images from very early in our church. We know that the Lord offers himself for us going for the lost sheep, caring for the whole flock, we turn to the Lord so often, particularly in this season, asking his forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers brother, and sisters, that I that have, I have greatly, greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most, most grievous fault. Therefore, therefore I ask, ask Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And when they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
for the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, that is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, 
he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. It is, it's a beautiful spring day. It is the day we anticipate that should follow Easter each and every year. In the parishes, it would have been a weekend beset with wonderful opportunities. Not only these readings of the Good Shepherd, yesterday morning would have been confirmation for 70 or more of our high schoolers with their sponsors, their parents, their families, all gathered here with Bishop Haynes. This afternoon would have been the first of our two celebrations of First Holy Communion up at St. Eugene today with the children in their perfect dresses, their first suits and ties, their truly pivotal moment in their lives. There's some sadness when we realize we have to figure out a way to do these well at some kind of impromptu, not impromptu, but deferred and replanned and kind of recreated. It will be good, it will be wondrous, but it won't be the same. Many of you have already heard, in four weeks we will start celebrating, with some restrictions, public masses again. This church will have some people in it no matter what. A lot of you for the last, oh now we're going on six or seven weeks, have been very insistent to the point of some anxiety, to the point maybe even if we're honest, some anger. I want the Eucharist. I need to have the Eucharist in my life, if not, if not weekly, if not daily, at least weekly, some way. We've 
try different options, try different, you know, con contrived ways of parking lots and drive throughs and passing by and whatever. In four weeks, when Pentecost comes around, how would, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to kind of logistically handle only 25% of the capacity of the church. What if I, we, made a decision? Well, the first weekend, we'll devote all the available spaces in all three of the masses to the first communicants and their families, and no one else. The second weekend, we'll devote all of the available spaces and all of, at the all of the available masses, we're limited to three each for Father Jordan and I, to the confirmands and their sponsors, parents, their families. Some of you would start getting anxious, angry. What if I even then said on that third weekend, it should be for everyone who hasn't tuned in, who hasn't logged on, who hasn't been connected, that we should go out and make sure they are invited and they are drawn into this moment, this opportunity. As we started the accommodations for this period of shelter, the first weekend that I did drive through confessions, someone who pulled through told me it had been more than 20 years since they went to confession. I asked, why now? And they said, I just wanted to see what it would be like to do it in my car. They were back last weekend. What if we use this transitional, pivotal moment and did things for the other? It's kind of like the dilemma of the lifeboat. The dilemma of the lifeboat you know, there are great philosophical arguments and debates about it, but, you know, it's women and children first. Children because they are full of potential. Women because they're the most immediate caretakers. They're the, the life givers. There's always that scene at the end of the movie, Titanic or any other. Who would you give up your seat for? Who would you be willing to say, I want this more than anything? but they need it more than anything. I think I deserve this, but they're the lost sheep. The Good Shepherd Sunday, there are different options for the readings, and one of them is always going to find the lost sheep, and one of them is today's, and it's all this imagery. The, today, we don't have Jesus specifically being called the shepherd, but we know it's implied in there, and we know that he goes in and calls his sheep by name. They know him by his voice. There are times, though, in the scripture, in this passage today, he says he's the gate, that barrier of protection for the sheep in the most trying times, the night time. And there are other times we'll remember back to Holy Week and Good Friday when he is the lamb. He can be the shepherd, the gate, the lamb. He can fit so many ways. Many of you in my parishes know that I tell you, listen to the scriptures proclaimed or read the scriptures as if it were a mystery novel. Something is unusual and stands out as, as needing to be unpacked and understood. For me this week, it was the phrase that the gatekeeper lets him in. Now, Father Stephen and I chatted about this a little bit before Mass. It's, you know, one of the most obvious interpretations is that the gatekeeper is God, the Father, sending his Son to be incarnate, born of Mary, so that he might enter into the world, enter into the sheepfold. But most of Jesus' parables have a pretty, you know, if it's God the Father, it's the master of the house, it's the Lord of the manor. And I just toyed with this week. Who is the gatekeeper? Who is this person that regulates how Jesus enters into the sheepfold? When Jesus, when the shepherd is off finding the lost sheep, it's his responsibility to keep the gate closed and keep an eye on things. I even imagine it's his responsibility as the shepherd calls his sheep and they know him by his voice. He might even point out, that's one of yours over there. A <laughs> little skittish one there is not joining. And he helps him get it. 
Who is the gatekeeper who allows the Lord in so that the shepherd, the shepherd might accomplish what the shepherd needs to do and wants to do? I dare say you could make the case that, well, for personally, I'm the gatekeeper. Do I have to allow the Lord into my life, into my heart, into my times of need, into my times of joy? Far too many of us keep it locked up, keep our lives closed, keep the Lord out. We have to be the gatekeeper that opens, that allows. But it's also the case that we are a gatekeeper often for how others encounter the Lord. How others have the opportunity to be called by the shepherd. The first communicants are here because their parents. Their parents want them to have the sacraments, to have the experience of the body and blood of Christ. They open the gate. I hope they do it every Sunday. I hope they do it every moment and every opportunity. But at least on this day would have been the day that the parents opened the gate so that the Lord, the good shepherd, could come to them, these innocent little lambs that they are. Then there's the confirmant, a sponsor or a parent, maybe by insistence, but hopefully by invitation and inspiration. Do this. Do this. We expect you to go through the formation and the preparation, and you can decide if you want the sacrament, maybe some parents say. But do this. Allow the Lord and the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be explained to you, to be taught to you, so that you might then be the gatekeeper of your own heart and receive the Lord. I remember different people in my high school years who were essentially a gatekeeper of vocation. Today is the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. I remember people who said, Paul, you, you, you should think about being a priest. You'd be a good priest. They opened the gate. People who introduced, the two of you would be, have a loving life together, are a gatekeeper. All of us have a role to play. All of us are gatekeepers First of our own heart, will we allow the Lord in? And second, will we allow the Lord to go to others? I gave the example at the beginning, a challenging example, and I don't know how we're going to figure this out yet. That We'll let you know how we determine who comes to what mass. But who would you give up your seat at that mass for? You've been waiting six, seven, eight weeks for the Eucharist. But you're a gatekeeper, and you give the opportunity that someone else might be called by the Lord. Someone else might be the lost sheep that the Lord needs time to go find. Someone else might need, you may deserve, you may want. But as the gatekeeper, we must allow the Lord to encounter the others, the little ones those who are in transformative moments or phases of their life, those who may be encountering the Lord again for the first time in 20 years. The Feast of the Good Shepherd is a powerful, encompassing image of Christ. In fact, it's one of the earliest images we find as they would render who Christ is on the walls of catacombs and in, you know, artistic work inlaid, mosaics inlaid in floors in the ancient churches of the ancient worship spaces. It's earlier, it predates even the crucifix. It's a powerful image, but it's a powerful responsibility if we see ourselves fitting into that parable Every parable we do this, which son are you in the prodigal son? Which, which hour of worker are you in the parable of the, the workers coming at all hours of the day? If we see ourselves in this, we could be the sheep or we could be the wolves. We just might be the gatekeeper. Who today in prayer, in, in limited opportunity as it is, who today or who in a few weeks or who in the fullness of our lives do you open the gates so that the Lord might enter their life? And for yourself, 
Will you open the gate that the Lord might enter your life? That the shepherd might enter the sheepfold to take us to that flock of his own. Blessings to all of you. And let us now, together, offer our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn now, trusting in the Good Shepherd. Let us turn to the Lord now with our prayers of petition. For the Lord's flock and its pastors, that they always reflect the Lord's deep love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of every nation, that they live their lives with courage and find true peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those called to religious vocations and for those called to minister in the world as lay people, that they respond with generous hearts to the Lord's voice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists and healthcare workers, that during this pandemic they are guided by wisdom and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in Christ, that they may one day see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, especially John Santori and the people of St. Monica and St. Eugene parishes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, our Shepherd, in faith and in hope, asking the intercession of St. Eugene and St. Monica, we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his his holy church. church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat eat this this bread, bread, We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Monica and St. Eugene and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Friends, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As you can, share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As a communion meditation, let us offer an act of spiritual communion. Please, you can do it uh, repeating after me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are, are present. In the most blessed sacrament. In the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I love, I love you, you above, above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I, I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I touched on a number of things during my homily. Uh, many of you know the Archbishop this week promulgated directives and guidelines for restoring public celebration of the Mass. I ask that you please be patient as to uh, how that is going to work. We have four weeks. We have to figure out a, a number of logistics and a number of processes to make it uh, work best for, uh, for our communities. We will communicate with you, so please be patient. Do remember, I also mentioned, do remember how the lives of so many uh, sp traditionally spring, people participating in spring sacraments have been thrown into upheaval. Everything from uh, RCIA candidates and adult confirmations and receptions in, into the church from uh, the Easter vigil to yesterday would have been confirmation, today would have been one of the two, uh, first, right, first communion, first Eucharist, and then another one uh, a week later. Uh, Pray for those young people, those community, those people who uh, now it's all thrown. We have to figure out when and how. Uh, today is World Day of Prayer for vocations. Pray for young people, all people, to listen, to respond. Be a gatekeeper and suggest that they might be a good religious sister, brother, priest, deacon, that they might serve the church in that way. Some practicals. We will have food pantry collection today at both parishes, noon to 1 o'clock. Please do it as the drive through in the parking lots. Follow the instructions of the volunteers so that uh, social distancing can be respected and well served. Uh, please uh, bring some uh, canned and box goods uh, and possibly your envelope for the parish. Next week is Mother's Day. Uh, with the collection that day, uh, thanks to the uh, support of the Knights of Columbus, Father Jordan and I will be present and we'll give uh, flowers to the moms in, in each car and offer a special Mother's Day blessing to them. So please do maybe make that, you know, stream the Mass in the morning, have a nice uh, breakfast, uh, brunch as family, and then uh, go out for, hopefully it'll be another beautiful day like this, out for a drive and stop by the parishes 
with a food pantry donation and this chance to receive a blessing. Uh, the, uh, the, I think we're in post-production for the podcast, so it'll go up uh, today on the various social media, two priests in a podcast, uh, people have been asking. And then tomorrow night I'll do another virtual narthex at 7 p.m. Uh, Q&A, casual Q&A uh, about all things parish and church. I try my best, can't answer everything. Do make the most of this beautiful day. There is a promise and a hope on the horizon. There is a good shepherd who is calling our name. We must respond. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.